In this one, we're going to be creating a single page Django application, really a single module. And this idea came from an article I read from Adam Johnson. That article is linked in the description. But let's go ahead and take a look at how this is executed. So it's going to be a lot more like Flask or Fast API than the Django you might know. Naturally, as a first step, I'm going to create a virtual environment. In this case, I'll use pipmv. And I'm just going to be using the latest version of Django. Older versions of Django should be able to do this too, but it really never occurred to me to even attempt something like this until I read Adam's article. Um, and that really got me thinking like, should Django be used a lot more like Flask is for all sorts of things? Well, my answer is you'll see at the end, but the general idea is creating a Django module of some kind. So let's go ahead and do that with app.py. So inside here, I'm actually gonna go ahead and set up my Django project itself. Now, there's a lot of different ways on how I could go about doing this. And the general idea is to first set up our Django settings. So from, we'll go ahead and do from django.conf, we're gonna go and import settings. And then I'll just do settings.configure. And in this case, I'll just pass in debug, capital debug equaling to true. Now, if you're actually very familiar with Django, what this is doing is overriding the default Django configuration. So that default settings.py module that comes in there. So as I have it right now, I, I don't have very many of the security features that the settings module has, but you can pass in all of those arguments in there. Um, so like in general settings modules, what you'll often see is the debug being up here, right? So here's the normal settings module. You've got a base directory. This is just for reference on the settings module itself. It doesn't have anything to do with anything else. Uh, you've got a secret key in here. So it's probably a good idea to pass in a secret key. Adam's article shows you how to generate one. So check that out. Uh, debug already have that allowed host. This is very common when you don't have debug as true, uh, but you can go ahead and add in allowed hosts as well. And it is a string itself. Um, so these are kind of the baseline things in addition to the root URL configurations module, which in our case, we just need to set it to this actual module itself. And we do that by just using two underscores of name. So that's the primary settings configuration that you would do. But looking in a standard Django project with, you know, the Django dash admin start project, that scaffolding that's created for us will often have this settings module in there. Not often, it will have that. Uh, but of course, all of the configuration you're doing here is potentially all of this as well. So if you wanted all of those security features, you could totally do that. As well as this configuration, configure can pass in a bunch of other arguments. So definitely check out the documentation on that one and I'll leave a little comment for it here. Uh, and I'll put that in the description below as well. Okay, so that alone is not gonna solve the problem for us. Uh, the next one is our primary view function, whatever that view function is that we might wanna use. So I'm gonna go ahead and say home view and takes in request. And of course, when in doubt, do args and keyword args. And of course, I'm using a function-based view here. Um, you can definitely use class-based views because Django is installed, but I'm not doing that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do from django.http import HTTP response. Now, part of the reason I'm using HTTP response in this case is because I don't have templates set up at all. So if I was using render, you'd probably want to have templates set up for that. In this case, I'm going to just use hello world of a string. Not a huge surprise there. Okay, so now I have a home view. And naturally, the next step would be to actually wrap in some URLs. So we'll go ahead and do from django.urls import path and then URL patterns, but it has to be named URL patterns in order for URL uh, root URL conf to actually work. And of course in here, we're just gonna add in our path as an empty string for our home view and we'll use home view in here. Okay, uh, so we're not quite done yet. The next thing is actually getting the WSGI um, application running. So it doesn't have to use the WSGI, but Typical Django projects have this WSGI.py file and we can actually use all of those same things. So if I came in here and brought it in, 
what I see here is the Git WSGI application, right? So that's how we're gonna go ahead and bootstrap that WSGI application, which I could just call it app. I'll leave it in as application because that's what the default is. We actually don't need to set an environment variable because we are not using the Django settings module like you would on a WSGI file. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. And we also don't need OS in this case because I didn't set that environment variable. So I'll go ahead and refresh all of those things. Now, in my case, I want to actually bring down the application itself a little bit further and have it as my last declared variable to ensure that all of these things are also set up. Uh, the final process to this is just setting this as equal to main. And then we want to execute the Django project itself. So inside of WSGI.py, we don't see that. Inside of settings, we don't see that. Uh, one of the places you definitely will see it in a normal Django project is inside of manage.py, right? So it's literally what we've got here, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this whole block inside of my app and bring it into this execution. Um, again, this is just replacing essentially what manage.py is so I can actually just run this app much like you do with your single page or with your standard Django scaffolding. Uh, so notice that sys is also involved in here. So I want to import that at the very top. So import sys. There we go. And that's it. So now I'm going to go ahead and do pip env shell, just activating my virtual environment here. And I'm going to go ahead and run python app.py run server. Now, why is it run server? Well, app.py is actually taking place of manage.py in this case right here. That's it. All of the other things that are related to, you know, actually setting and configuring Django itself. So I hit run server here. Notice the server that's running, you know, it's on 8000 port like it normally is. But of course, if I actually changed it to 888, that, that still runs as it normally would. And it is still running Django, right? So it doesn't actually say it's using any settings module itself. So it doesn't show me the settings module as it would if I were using the standard Django scaffolding. Um, and now when I open up this page, of course I get hello world. Okay, so this is a really rapid fire introduction to how to do this. Adam's uh, documentation or his article on this is great. So I definitely recommend reading that. Um, but the goal of this was actually to show you how similar you could actually make this to being like Flask. It was really eye-opening for me when I saw this. So you can absolutely come in here and make new views, right? So about view, and we just change this to about. And again, um, slightly different than something like Flask or Fast API because the URLs, the URL patterns work just slightly different. Uh, but now I can actually come in here and do something like that. My server is still running. So if I ran in here and went to about um, and with the trailing flash in this case, uh, I get now about world. So your question now should be, should you actually use this in the future? And my answer is probably not. You're probably gonna wanna use the Django-admin start project method as that's generally accepted across all kinds of Django developers. But the point of this was actually to show you that you can absolutely break apart all of a giant Django application and make it as small as you want, right? This is almost as small as it's gonna get. But what you should see is this is gonna also balloon really quickly. Like when you start using Django, you're probably not gonna wanna go this method, right? You're probably gonna wanna use the other method, the default method that Django has because your applications want to use all of those batteries included. Now, FastAPI and Flask are really great for doing those minimal applications, but I think this was a useful exercise to just appreciate what Django brings to the table, for one. The other thing is to acknowledge how awesome Adam's articles are related to these single page applications. Um, he also has one for REST API, so I definitely recommend that you check those things out because I got a lot of it and I think you will too. So thanks so much for watching. Hopefully to see you guys again in the future and please consider subscribing. I'll see you next time.